Alrighty, so today we're gonna take a look at the everlasting topic of pagination and sorting and basically how we are gonna do that in our system. My name is Vasily Lenik and you're watching the .NET architecture series where we are building a notification system using industry's best practices. Since previous video I've added some code for the application registry service that we have in our system which essentially is a core service that other services might call and use in a synchronous fashion. Now, everything that we will need to enable pagination in our system was added to the shared library over here inside the pagination and sorting folders. Inside the pagination, we have an ipaged query, which basically has only the page and the page size that we're gonna use. And inside the sorting, we have an isorted query which contains sort column and sort order. Sort order being a simple enum with none, ascending and descending. In many classes online, you might find that you have a class which basically has these two properties combined with these two and all your query classes basically inherit from that one set class, which in my opinion is not a wrong approach, but I prefer having those properties set up via interfaces. For pagination, we will need two more classes the page list class, which basically will represent our page response. And over here we have a couple of properties. So we have the items that we want, which is a generic parameter of T. We have the page, we have the page size, the total count of items. As you might have, as you might have noticed, all the properties have only the getters and we have a simple constructor that accepts a list, a page, page size and total count. Now, if you're working with entity framework, you might not want to have here a list but and send the total count, but rather have this form of extension where you specify the source, the page and the page size. And optionally, I've never seen people online sending the cancellation token, which to me seems kind of strange. But over here we have an iQueryable that we will transform into a SQL query in order to count async and to get all the items inside a list and then we just basically call the constructor for the page list nothing fancy basic simple code over here to get this all working i've added some code to the application registry service over here and inside the contracts let's take a look at the i application repository and over here we have the get application list query which inherits from i page query and i sorted query with all the properties basically implementing these two interfaces uh, sometimes people specify a basic sort order, like the default one being ascending. I would leave this to the client calling the application repository. If not, I just sort by the basic column. Next on the line, we should take a look at the service itself. So over here we have the application repository. And here is the method for getting the list async. Initially, we're just basically creating the query itself. So application, then including the events, mark it as queryable. And if we have provided a sort order, we basically check if the sort order is ascending, order by uh, a specific column, if not order by descending. Uh, this small method over here, which in turn receives the query itself, is defined below. So over here, we basically define the sort column that we have received as a string over here. So if it's name, we sort by the name. If it's code, we sort by the code. If not, the default value is we sort by the name itself. And we're basically reusing this same method for both cases. Next, we are going into the page list extensions, creating async and basically specifying our query over here. And to contract this method is nothing else than just a small projection that I have set up inside my service, where I basically create an application, which is the contract from the data model and basically back from an application, I create a data model. So this query that we pass into here will be executed inside the extension method, then we're gonna basically take a specific page and a specific page size and pass in the cancellation token that we have received over here. This is essentially everything you need to have in order to enable pagination inside your services. And it's pretty easy and straightforward. As well, we have the basic in 
entity framework core integration with iQueryable, which is really neat. Uh, small disclaimer over here, some people prefer having this extension method inside the page list itself. I really opt for having it inside a specific static class extension, since I don't want to have anything related to entity framework inside my page list. As well, I've seen some people add over here somewhere a string property, which is basically your right to the next page or your right to the previous page inside the response to the client. I consider that a little bit redundant. It's a personal opinion, but if the client was able to create the first request with all the data, it's just as easily for him to create a request for the next page and take care of that, since basically that will reduce the amount of code that we need to have on our backend API and basically the complexity of the API itself. And less code is better code. Yeah, so that was it for this video. Since the topic is really small, but I wanted to cover it nonetheless, since I wanted to have it on the plan and to go over it. Uh, until the next video comes out, I'll leave somewhere over here some other video that you can check out meanwhile. And yeah, see you next time.